بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد الصادق الأمين وقرب بشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحلل أقدة من لساني يفقر قولي Welcome to the second topic in system planning It's under, uh, under project management as well In this second part we will discuss the project management in terms of the work breakdown and so on As in the first part of the system planning we discuss the project uh, principles or foundations in terms of initiating and selecting uh, defines of business problem and determining the visibility of the proposed project we did also discuss the hardware and software evaluation process uh, and then we do the forecasting and analysis of the tangible and intangible cost and benefit which is in, in a simple way the cost and benefit analysis so today we are going to focus in these three main points first uh, we will try to see how to manage the, uh, the project and preparing a budget creating the work breakdown structure scheduling activities and controlling the schedule and cost also we will go uh, we will look into the building uh, and managing the project team and then lastly we will discuss professionally write and present the effective system proposal and the concentration on both content and design we will discuss that in a brief the main point is building the management project team and how to manage it and how to uh, select the, the team uh, project work breakdown structure it means that we are breaking down the uh, something the general things or the whole project into small pieces or into smaller uh, phases and then uh, assign activities and the the, the responsible uh, each responsible person responsible or group or team to handle that uh, breakdown uh, basis so work breakdown structure often a project needs to be broken down into a smaller task or activities these tasks together make up a work breakdown structure which we call it uh, we can call it wbs so in here you we have this uh, diagram showing that we have <coughs> sorry this project that uh, being uh, divided into two phases uh, or we call it either to call it phase or deliverable uh, so in each phase we have work package and then this work package uh, this one we, we can call it work breakdown structure for each work package there is an activities so okay so we divide or we list down the activities that should be done in each work package and each work package should belong to a phase or deliverable uh, stage and this phase should be part of the total project okay and also we will discuss after a while the assigned team or individual to each activity work breakdown structure priorities so we have three main uh, points that we should look into when we design the uh, work breakdown structure first that each task or activities contain contains one deliverable or tangible outcome so each activity should uh, lead to uh, one tangible or deliverable uh, outcome the second each task can be assigned to either a single individual or single group each task has responsible person to monitor and controlling the performance so first assigning uh, uh, first we have each task should ha contain sh or should be related directly to uh, outcome uh, or a tangible uh, deliverable uh, outcome and then each uh, activity should be related to a single individual uh, or single group and then the last one we have someone to control and responsible uh, person to monitor supervise and control in developing a work breakdown structure wbs we should 
understand that the con we should uh, understand the concept behind the work breakdown structure. The first idea, first that uh, WBS is based on decompensation starting. So we start with large ideas, then break it down into manageable activities. Normally, those who are uh, in the top of the t of the management uh, of the pro project, let's say the project manager uh, and the top management of the company, they have the idea. They have uh, what we call um, main themes, but uh, these main themes cannot be uh, translated and reflected to uh, what should the operational people to do so we should break it down into manageable activities that easy to understand easy to achieve by the team the second the product oriented building a, let's say for example a website can be break down into many parts meaning that each theme can be break down into many part or activities the process oriented emphasis that the importance of each phase so each phases let's say we divide into the designer the uh, the interface and so on for the website design so all of that is uh, very important phases to uh, complete the uh, full uh, uh, the full uh, the full project this uh, figure 3.12 is a sample work breakdown structure. If you can see here, we have main themes, we have project initiation, we have early planning phase, we have the develop supporting plans, analysis, design, and launch. In under each one of the uh, main activity or main uh, phase or deliverable uh, outcome, we have. Uh, several uh, activities a simple and welcome project team conduct historical research about the business and discuss the objective with client so these activities is uh, manageable activities can be understand and can be easy to assign per person or group to to it now let's have a look to the time estimation techniques. The accuracy and the quality of the output of time estimation is relying on the experience of the team, the project team and manager. Also, we need to identify the functions point in each estimation of time. And there are several software can be used to uh, uh, estimate the time. Uh, there are there are five common techniques to estimate the time. First, analogies estimating, parametric estimating, bottom-up estimating, expert judgment, and three-point estimating techniques. So uh, we will have uh, we will discuss uh, each one uh, of these uh, methods. But uh, analogy estimating is based on the comparing the current or the new project with the previous uh, project uh, whereby parametric estimating is compared the, the new project with existing or current uh, uh, similar uh, project bottom up estimating is based on the concept of work breakdown structure so uh, when we break down the deliverable uh, outcome uh, into activities and or uh, ba activities package then uh, we uh, can estimate the time based on that expert judgment is based on the, the judgment of experts so we uh, estimate the time based on their opinion three point estimating we have uh, we estimate the time based on three uh, three uh, points first optimistic estimation uh, then pessimistic estimation and then most likely estimation so meaning that optimistic estimation it is too early we let's say we say we can finish this uh, project within uh, three months the pessimistic estimation we say okay this one need one year so the most likely estimation will be in between those uh, estimation okay so this uh, diagram is explaining in details 
that the analogy estimating is comparing with the previous similar project bottom up estimation is comparing the uh, the the faces and then uh, compare it or uh, estimating uh, estimate based on this uh, basis or the work package and then we have the the parametric estimation we compare with the similar project lastly is three point estimation based on the three point realistic optimistic and uh, pessimistic realistic mean most likely okay. during the planning we need to process or uh, perform function point analysis with regard to the software the function point analysis is basically we take the five main components of a computer system and read them in terms of complexity what is the five main components for any computer system first external input external output external qu queries internal logical files and then external interface files so those files or those fi main functions we should assess them based on the complexity are they easy to uh, process or they are difficult to uh, to uh, i mean to to process in terms of the input the output and so on this figure 3.13 it shows the beginning to plan a project by breaking uh, breaking the the whole project or breaking the project into three main uh, activities we we can see in the left side we have uh, faces or deliverable uh, outcome we have analysis design and implementation and in the right side we have the activities the breakdown or we can call it the work package we have data gathering data flow and decision analysis and we have proposal preparation under the analysis design we have data entry design input design output design and data organization implementation we have implementation and evaluation and maintenance you can see here those activities can be break down also into a smaller ones so let's say data gathering we can also break it into uh, gathering through interview gathering through uh, survey gathering through observation and so on figure 3.14 is breaking down the activities into more smaller or detailed activities so let's say here we have data gathering conducted interviews administration questionnaires read company report introduce uh, prototypes or observe re reaction uh, to the uh, prototypes what is the next is we give a week requires requires to uh, the estimation time here we give the estimation time for each breaking down activity okay then data flow and decision analysis the analysis data so it is in week eight or need eight weeks and so on now let's have a look to the project scheduling we have junk chart technique it is simple lends itself uh, to the end users communication drawing uh, to scale so it's easy to to use we will have examples on that then we have PART diagrams useful when activity can be done in a parallel uh, manner so when we have that that kind of project so it's better to use uh, PART uh, diagrams so this is example of Jan chat so we have the task name we have duration and we have the starting and end this is based on uh, software so you can see here the uh, the, the designing or how it works so we we show term in term of uh, days weeks and uh, it shows here the the timing the duration how long it needs so 20 days and then we we will it shows when it starts start in let's say in second of uh, in 13th of february and uh, finish on um, the, on uh, March 12th. Okay, so it shows that. Okay, we buy PART diagrams. 
it explain the uh, task the dependency where it's related to and also it explain the lanes you can see here we have a customer uh, account we have sh shipping uh, side we have shipping chart uh, card and testing so all of this is uh, parallel uh, activities done in the same time but we have the explanation uh, for this activities we have the duration three days we have the starting and finish also we can we, it can be add the responsibility for each one of it so here also an example of the uh, PRT chart or the giant uh, chart you can see here we have more uh, parallel uh, transactions than within uh, um, within the project up to the end whereby the giant chart is mainly uh, it shows the same task you can see here task four is done in uh, let's say in week or in the day uh, start, starting from we, uh, week let's say or from 5 of october up to uh, 7th of uh, october uh, here we see how yeah, they have the task for has the duration three days and also it explain also the responsibility so uh, sometime when you have parallel uh, uh, tasks it's better to use the BART uh, chart figure 3.15 for more more illustration uh, showing that using a two dimensional giant chart for planning activity that can be accomplished in parallel so you can see here we even uh, the uh, uh, giant chart can be used when we have a parallel uh, task by using different colors and so on figure 3.16 uh, showing the comparing between giant chart compared with uh, PART diagram or called network diagram for scheduling the activities you can see uh, this uh, two diagrams in a simple way the gen chart is mainly focused on the timing and did not show the sequence uh, or the dependency of the activities whereby the BART uh, diagram is showing that and illustrating that so uh, it depends in the needs of the project scheduling uh, process this figure is showing more complicated uh, PART diagram for analysis phases of system project. You can see how complex you, we have several parallel and we have uh, the dependency uh, task showing in the BART system or BART diagram. The advantages of BART diagram first, it's easy to identify the order of the task or the procedures the precedence so you can see here we we know that uh, task 10 is the is before uh, this task and this uh, task 20 and 30 is parallel task and uh, 40 is uh, the sequence task and so on and then it's easy to identify the critical path and thus critical activities too so the critical activities here the this task and this one because you cannot uh, continue doing other tasks unless you finish these tasks okay and then it is easy to determine the slack of time after we discuss the estimation techniques on estimating the time of the project and uh, plan the scheduling of project scheduling and so on now let's have a look into the estimating cost so first let's estimate the cost based on the work breakdown structure remember when we talk about the work uh, work breakdown structure we say that work breakdown structure we break it into phases or deliverable uh, outcomes then we have work package and then we have activities so based on that also we can uh, assign the task uh, or the cost for each uh, for each activity so estimating the cost for each activity in the work breakdown structure second preparing the budget for the project and have it's approved by the organizations or the client uh, organ we mean by the top management of the organizations or the client and then manage 
and control the cost throughout the project. That's the uh, process of estimation the cost. There are several approaches to uh, cost estimation. Uh, first, as we say, the uh, basing estimates on the similar project, uh, also called the top-down approach, or building a bottom-up estimation approach, or using a parametric modeling or even the analogy uh, approach or the judgment as, as we discuss in uh, previous so uh, those are estimating methods that we discuss on time but it can be also implemented in the cost so what is the project risk project risk means the failure of the project in achieving the objectives so the project is about system uh, developing a system we develop a uh, less functional uh, system or a weak system or we uh, fail to uh, it's not functional well okay so uh, or we uh, exceeded the time uh, that's we schedule to uh, complete the, the project or also the uh, last one is the about the cost we exceed the cost so uh, that is uh, kind of failures or risk of the project so how to prevent that uh, first by training the project team by also assigning or uh, hiring uh, the uh, project manager uh, with uh, high experience and then learn why other projects have been failed there are technique helping in uh, uh, assessing the project risk called fish, uh, fish bone diagram or uh, cause and effect diagram or an ashikwa diagram uh, it is systematically list all the possible problems or issues that can occur uh, and how what is the effect of that uh, issues so here we can see this is the causes that's why because it looks like the, the 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 fish bone so you can see here the uh, we put, we have the uh, materials we have sub causes and we have methods and sub causes and environment measurement people machines and then those are uh, the causes and it will uh, drive to a big issues or the uh, clear risk of the effect okay so this also another uh, diagram uh, 3.21 uh, showing the fishbone diagram you can see here that let's say in terms of quality uh, we have uh, defect rate ex ex excessive customer not satisfied with the interface so this is about the quality cost high stuff turnover need for additional programmers and so on so that will cause the uh, effect uh, of uh, of the project risk one of the project management concept is the expediting of the activities expediting is it means that we uh, try to speed up the process without affecting the the quality uh, of the outcome okay so expediting can help reduce the time it takes to complete an entire project the expedited activities have to be on the critical another concept under the project management is earn value management evm it's base it's a technique used to help determining the progress on the project it's based on three concept the scope the cost and the time so the project cost the project schedule and time and then performance of the project team there are four key measures in uh, end value man uh, management or EVM. First, budget at completion is the total budget for the project. Second, planned value is the value of the work that is to be completed on the project. Actual cost is the total cost anchored in the complete in completing the the work. And then the last uh, key measures is end value is the estimate of the value of the work performed this far this diagram is explaining the cost and schedule variance so based on uh, evm so in the vertical you can see here is the cost the us dollar 
and in the horizontal we have the time okay so we have the the blue line or the blue curve is the time and phase budget which is uh, it shows here by blue so uh, whereby the actual cost of work to the date is with the blue one with the green one and then we have the red one the red is the earned value so the different between the difference between the end value and the the actual cost we call it the cost variance and the scheduling variance is between the uh, the, the end value and the the budget the budgeting here so meaning that it's based on comparing the cost comparing the uh, the cost and the timing based on the performance and then we try to uh, have we try to see the, the the budgeted or the planned cost and the timing and we compare it with the actual uh, how much we spend in terms of time and in terms of cost and we uh, draw the line, the curve for it and then we see the end value management uh, to 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 manage the, the 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 value of the management okay managing project teams it means how we select based on what and how we manage them and uh, supervise them to uh, achieve the task on uh, effective manner managing the team project there are four main activities should be done in managing the team project or in the beginning of uh, the team uh, project uh, managing the team project first assembling the team okay selecting the team based on the their expertise and so on then team communication strategies so what is the communication uh, approach that we are going to use is it open uh, approach or uh, hierarchical uh, approach so we decided based on the needs uh, and the requirement of the project uh, achievement and then project productivity goals what is the uh, the goals the productivity goals that the project uh, assigned so we should have it clear in the beginning of forming and assembling the team and then team member motivation we should sit up and uh, understand what is the motivation of the team is it based on uh, money collection uh, they they want to gain more uh, more income or they also uh, motivated to achieve this uh, project because they feel uh, it is part of them then it the motivation will be more ins uh, inspiring so the assembling of team should be based on those uh, values shared value of teamwork good work ethic honesty competency readiness to take and leadership based on expertise motivation and enthusiasm to the project communication strategies we have two types of managers or leaders first task leader leader who encourage and lead members to uh, accomplish the tasks and the second one is social missional leader the one whom concerned with the social relations between the team members or we can uh, say that the the leader who has the uh, emotional intelligence skills and then the system analyst must manage team members their activities and their time and resources so it is very important for project uh, achievement to have clear productivity goals to motivate the uh, the team members so for, uh, for project successful it requires the reasonable productivity goals for tangible outputs uh, and process activity to be set in the beginning of the project so goal setting helps to motivate team members as we how about the project management in e-commerce is it same like the traditional uh, project management let's say opening a branch is it same with a branch with the project related uh, to let's say having a website or having 
uh, having a software and so on is it same or not so that's the, what we will discuss now so e-commerce and traditional software project management differences is uh, first that the data used by e-commerce systems is sc uh, scattered across the organizations uh, e-commerce system need a staff with a wide variety of skills partnership must be built externally and internally well uh, ahead uh, of implementation and then the security is of utmost importance in uh, the e-commerce so that's the four main things that uh, differ between traditional uh, and uh, e-commerce software project charter is one of the project management uh, techniques to describe in writing document what the expected result of the system project are and the time frame for delivery so the project charter is a document outline the issues tar target and the framework of the process improvement effort uh, it has several uh, aspects or dimensions under the project charter. First, the problem statement, business case, goal statement, uh, timeline, scope, and time member. Project charter uh, clarifies these questions. First, what does the users expect of the project? What is the scope of the project? What analysis methods will the analyst used in uh, to interact with the users who are the key participants to the uh, system uh, project what are the project deliverability or the what is the uh, project outcome or tangible outcome who will evaluate the system and how will they evaluate the the project what is the estimated project timeline who will train the users who will maintain the system so all of these questions is uh, clarified or answered by the project charter documenting uh, or writing uh, writing document the system proposal structure start with cover letter title page of project table of content executive summary uh, outline of the system study with the appropriate documents detailed results of the system study system alternative systems analyst recommendation summary and appendix if, the, if any please take note when we design and hand out the proposal it's not just a narrative uh, way, method it's not writing wordly uh, proposal we need to have uh, figures uh, tables within the uh, within the, the the proposal so uh, effective use of table effective use of graphs to have effective tables we should consider several techniques first integrate integrated the table into the body of, uh, of the proposal try to fit the entire table vertically on a single page uh, number and title of table at the top of the page label each row and column use a box table if from uh, permits and then lastly use footnotes for if necessary to explain details information contains in the table so this one uh, this diagram is uh, showing those guidelines that we should uh, label all columns and row and also we should have uh, footnote to explain some certain things like this one so you put star here and this uh, explaining the this figure okay and then you put t t in the top of the table you put the number of the table and the title how about effective use of graphs first we choose we should choose a style graph that communicate the intended meaning well and integrate the graph into the body of the graph of the proposal give the graph a sequential figure number and meaningful title label each axis and any lines columns bars and so on in the graph and include a key indicate 
different uh, differently uh, give different color different shape to uh, to uh, make it easy and simple to understand the main idea so uh, this is a example of effective use of graphs so include the key uh, the, the key measures so what is the red line so it is cost of current system so and so on include the uh, meaningful title and number label the axis and the uh, line in summary for the two parts of the system planning first we discussed the project management fundamentals in terms of project initiation uh, we the, in the project initiation we identify the problems identify the needs and the opportunity and also determining the project visibility activity activity planning and controls the project scheduling and the management analysis team members this is in general so we discuss uh, along the second uh, the first and second part of the of the system planning uh, topic the uh, those those mean uh, project management fundamentals problem definition issues of the present uh, present system the objectives of each issue the requirement that must be included in all pro uh, proposed systems all of this is based on the project initiation and then the project selection and in terms of backed by management uh, meaning that we have authority of the management uh, commitment uh, of resources uh, attain goals uh, practical important and then we discuss the second uh, fundamentals of the project management which is the uh, visibility we discuss that visibility have three main dimensions operational technical and economic then acquiring hardware and software work breakdown structure which we discuss uh, today uh, project planning giant chart PERT diagram and function point analysis uh, for the system uh, for the for the system project and then t uh, forming and managing the team uh, e-commerce project we discuss how it's different from uh, the the traditional project and then preparing a system proposal so that's all and thank you so much and see you inshallah next week